Hello YouTube, and welcome to our playthrough of Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Now, before you begin watching this session, please remember that this is literally my very first time running an adventure. As such, I'm a little bit slow at times, and things don't always go perfectly smooth. With that said, I really hope you enjoy watching our game. Okay, this is going to be our session two of Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. So before we jump into the game and pick up where we left off, I'm just going to do a brief recap of last week's game. So uh, in our adventure, uh, Xandro and Sept are the two players, and they met up with each other for the first time just outside of Phandalin. And they rescued a girl named Donabella Fiasco, and she was kind of being... Uh, woven up by a giant spider, so they saved her and she joined the party as a sidekick. From there, the trio went on to Phandalin and spent a little bit of time looking around the town and talking to some of the locals, and the group eventually uh, called it a night and headed to the Stonehill Inn for a night's rest. Uh, while the adventurers were there, they learned about a white dragon that was flying around, terrorizing everybody in Phandalin. When they got up the next day, they went to the town master and got a job, and the job entailed them traveling about 15 miles southwest of Phandalin to warn some dwarves about the dragon. When they met up with the dwarves, they were asked to get rid of a monster that was hiding out in the temple, and that monster was preventing the dwarves from carrying on with their work. So the group successfully dispatched the threat, and then they proceeded to explore the temple. And their exploration efforts didn't turn up tons of treasure, but they didn't leave totally empty-handed. Donabella found 15 gems inside of a column that had kind of a false bottom, and Sep found a tiny jeweled dagger on a silver chain and uh, gave that over to Xandro. And for helping them with the uh, monster in the temple, the dwarves gave the group a pair of sending stones. And it was getting a bit on into the afternoon at that point, so rather than travel back to Phandalin, the group decided to uh, take up safety inside the temple and just rest there throughout the rest of the evening, spending time with the dwarves and just uh, having a night's rest. So that is a recap of last week. So let me go ahead and bring your guys' player back over to the... That's not the right screen, but I can only scroll so far. So it's... This one is where you guys should be at. Yep. All right. Alrighty. Okay, so... Basically, you guys went to bed, uh, or maybe not directly went to bed because it wasn't super late, but uh, spent the remainder of the sun, uh, while the sun was still up in the sky, spent the remainder of that evening inside the temple, and the dwarves had locked those uh, double doors there behind you guys so that uh, nothing could sneak in and get you so it was quite safe um, so I'm gonna say yeah you got your you got your full night's rest in so all your spells and hit points all that stuff should be fully regenerated by this point and also you guys had leveled up um, at the end of that adventure now I the kind of stepping out of character here for a second. The module doesn't specifically state when you level up, but I'm just going to say that you leveled up at the, uh, basically at the completion of the temple exploration. So I'm going to say at this point, it's the next day. The dwarves have already got up and opened up the temple doors. And it's uh, fairly early in the morning. You know, I imagine dwarves are somewhat early to rise. But the sun is up, and yeah, what do you guys want to do? Um, well, I'm going to get up, uh, just sort of walk over to the door, just sort of stand there uh, and look outside, um, and just sort of wait there for the others. Um, I could probably lean up against one of the pillars or something. Straight, covering my eyes because the yeah. sun hurts. 
blasted bright ball of fusion in the sky. One other thing I'm going to mention really quick. I was going to mention this at the very beginning, but I forgot. I think it might work out better if I control the role play of the sidekick. Um, yeah, I was going to mention that actually yeah. at one point. Yeah, because um, like I don't know what to do there. <laughs> yeah, as far as like uh, combat and all that stuff, uh, choices that she's your sidekick to do with as you want. But uh, after last week's game and watching back through the playback, I'm like, yeah, um, there was a few times where I actually wanted to control role play aspect from her, but I'm like, well, I already turned that over. So you know, we live and we learn. So going forward, I will probably, um, yeah, control role play for at least her, and we'll see if other sidekicks join. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, uh, so yeah, Xandro, you got up and you're kind of over there by the temple door, uh, checking out. And I, and I imagine that Donna Bella is probably doing about the same, probably going toward the exit, just looking out to see, you know, if it's safe. Basically, I can Im imagine her tentatively sticking her head out through the doors, looking up at the sky, and uh, maybe saying back to you guys, "Hey, it's a." Uh, Looks like a pretty good day. I don't see any dragons flying about. That's always a good sign, isn't it? Hmm. Well, I suppose it's not our day yet. Yeah, and uh, Set will like quickly eat a um, quick breakfast, and uh, he'll look over to Zandro, and he will say, "You know, you should consider getting a hat or something. It might help with that." Uh, sensitivity you have yeah i thought about it but i haven't found one that suits me you know mm. so guys I'm sure are we gonna there. stay around here or do you guys want to head back to Fandolin and take the note the dwarves gave us back to the town master well i, I suppose getting paid would be pretty lovely a lot of the way you think. All right, so I'm going to say, uh, yeah, you guys are going to head the, head out of the temple area. So let me move your page over. All right. Every time I adjust pages, I have to redo all the zooming and everything. I don't feel like I have to do that on the other game. So... I imagine Dazzlin is standing out here by by the one of these rock piles, kind of also taking in the morning and maybe says to you guys, So, uh are you gonna hang out for a while or are you heading back to back to Fandolin? Uh unfortunately we do have to head back. Uh we do have a job to deliver. Thank you for your hospitality though. That's all uh, thank you. Head. Yeah, we never would have been able to get on with our job if you guys hadn't come in and taken care of that monster for us. And and you found all sorts of rooms there in that temple that we had no idea was there. Dazzlin and Norbus, uh, or rather myself and Norbus, have been spending a good part of the night going around the temple and looking in the different rooms. Bit of a shame that it's all just kind of gone to ruins, but it's exciting nonetheless. Hmm. Well, you can't count on everything to stay forever. You know, time goes by. Towns crumble. Yeah, Sometimes the, even a temple like this will. Yeah, the dwarven, dwarven architecture is built to last, so I'm a little surprised to see this place having turned into ruins. You know... I do recall a story I read once. It was uh, about the deity that this temple was dedicated to, uh, Baronar, I believe is the god's name. Apparently, there was some sort of... His priesthood did something that disrespected the deity, and, and so he decided to basically send a... Out, I guess the earthquake, perhaps some sort of other natural disaster that destroyed many ah, of his yes. own followers. You must be talking about Abathor. Ah, uh, yes, Abathor. Yeah, Abathor. I'm not real scholarly in the ways of, you know, historical events and everything, but yeah, I'm aware of Abathor and some of the rumors that I've heard about this place, but 
uh, carry on. Sounds like you've heard more than I have. Well, judging judging by the skeletons we found in the ruins and the fact that it would appear that many of them were crushed, this this place seems to support the story. Yeah, based on what little I know, I've heard, heard rumors about this earthquake and how some of the dwarves who were actively working at the time were crushed by, by whatever transpired. I still to this day don't quite know why Abathar decided to bring down the temple on top of hardworking dwarves, but the gods, they have their ways. Not always to be understood. From what I understand, this Abathar is not exactly a caring god. While you guys are saying all this, Donabella is very actively kind of just looking up at the sky, checking things out, just making sure that there aren't any large shadows crossing across the sun or anything like that. And then uh, Dazzlin's going to say, well, once again, I can't thank you guys enough, but uh, Norbus and I, we're going to go ahead and get back inside. We got to make use of this day. There's a lot of rubble to be cleared out and uh, daylight's burning. And then with that, he just kind of heads back inside the temple. May fate guide your steps. Yeah, uh, what he said. <laughs> and then Donabella just kind of takes the opportunity to walk herself forward a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Set will, like, stretch one of his legs and then starts to get moving. Starts to get what? He starts to get moving along. All right, so uh, you guys heading... Yeah, Thunder's going to follow the others. Heading basically out of the temple there, I assume. Yeah. All right. So uh, when you get roughly over by this big set of double doors that you guys came through originally, you hear sounds coming from the other side of the doors. Uh Uh-oh. Like a Uh... growling almost, like a guttural kind of... Yeah, not quite growling, but that sort of guttural, guttural, uh, grunting sound. Sounds like some sort of beastie is outside. I'm gonna put my hand on a uh, doll by the shoulder, um, and sort of indicate with my head to for her to like step behind me. And with that, she takes no hesitation whatsoever. Not only steps behind you, but also steps behind Seth. <laughs> I'm going to draw my rapier and sort of cautiously step forward towards the doors. Okay. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, Set will, like, keep a hand on his holy symbol. Yeah. As you guys progress up there towards the doors, the sounds get louder and louder, and you can probably, at this point, Xandro, you can see sort of through the doors, and you can see uh, dark figures approaching you guys. Uh, what sort of figures? Are they humanoid? Are they beastioid? I think is what you call them. Uh, they're they're humanoid in nature in that they have legs and arms and um, and you can tell that there are three of these. Three humanoid figures. Yeah. If you want to do some sort of roll, let me see. What, what would that be? I might be able to give you a little more information. One second. It's not like a perception roll or an investigation, maybe. Um, yeah, let's take a look here. Let's see. Yeah, um, Set might be able to recognize, you know, the armor or the style of clothing that the creatures are wearing. Yeah, I'd say uh, if you guys want to roll perception, those of you that are up there close enough to the door, and it wouldn't be too difficult because it is daytime and they're not so terribly far away and i'm still in disadvantage mode oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yo yeah because you would uh I, I would say this probably qualifies as sunlight um although i mean it is morning so it's not like literally directly overhead 
But um, but yeah, Sep, you can tell these are orcs, and they are they're a bit they're a bit down a ways yet, but they are approaching. Yeah, looks like a bunch of orcs. And they're in your path. I mean, there's there's no way you can sneak around them because, uh, well, I shouldn't say there's no way, but you are inside of a canyon. It's going to be difficult to scale the wall of these canyons and go out away unnoticed. You you know, it looks like the they're they're coming toward the temple. You're not, and you and you you're probably not sure what their intentions are. Yeah, I just looked at Zandro. Unless you have a way to sneak in plain sight, we're going to have to take these beasties up ahead. We can ambush them. They seem to be heading through these doors, mm. so... We could attempt that. Wait here. Wait for them to come to us. That's a solid plan. Okay. Uh, I, saw, I saw take cover behind this wall. Yeah, and I imagine uh, Donabella hears what you guys are saying. She said my server connection was disconnected. Can you guys still hear me okay? I can hear you fine. All right, great. Wrong you just fucks up. Yeah, so Donabella hears what you guys are talking about, and she takes as much uh, cover as she can get, which obviously is going to be full cover behind these huge doors. But, uh, yeah, the, the sounds that you guys are hearing, uh, they're no longer getting closer, but they're just kind of... The, the, the orcs, because you now know they're orcs, they're sitting outside uh, a little ways down. They're out beyond these double doors, and they're just kind of um, almost mm, making, I would say, like a camp of sorts, uh, a makeshift camp. They're just kind of sitting down out there, uh, perhaps strategizing, deciding what they're going to do going forward. But uh, at the moment, at least, they're, they're, they're not advancing on you guys. What are these bastards doing? Maybe they're just scouting the place out. Well, can they hurry up? How loud are you guys being? I I'm trying to be quiet. I'm trying to be quiet, but I can imagine through frustration he's a little bit louder than he wants to be. Check one thing here. Trying to see it if orcs speak common. I can't remember. Yes, they do. Okay. So, yeah, these guys, uh, you know, you can't really tell what they're saying. They're just kind of hanging out out there. But uh, I'm going to say... I imagine... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, with uh, your conversation that you're having... Um... Let me see, what kind of role would that be to decide... If you're being quiet or not, um, I guess it'd be a roll you... on if it's like a, a passive perception on the orcs, sort of. Okay. And, and orcs end. Yeah, I, I doubt orcs have like high passive perception, but if it's high enough, imagine they might be able to hear us. Yeah, depending on how far away they are. Okay. Yeah. So. Um... Go ahead and just roll a. Uh, I guess you do it now. Well, yeah, you'd roll a. So if I'm checking, it's their passive perception. What would you be rolling? We wouldn't really roll a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's basically um, up to you. If you see their yeah perception is high enough for for them to just hear us or not. Yeah. Again, yeah, you're right. It's not very high. So I'm gonna go ahead and say. In fact, it's it's low enough that I'm gonna say they're not hearing you unless you're like clanking your armor and not exactly screaming, but speaking at a very high volume, especially since you're on the other side of those big, thick double doors. And so far, you haven't walked to the other side to reveal yourself or anything like that. So, uh, what is your plan? Are you going to hang out in here and wait till they come in, or...? I kind of want to observe what they do for a little longer. But Xander isn't that patient, so... <laughs> if he... Yeah. If it takes so... too long... Set will be willing to wait for a little while, since to him, you probably can't tell from the outside, he's actually a little bit excited to see some orcs, because he never got a chance to study them up close. Okay. Yeah, and I would say, at least for now, Xandro, you're not really able to tell what they're doing, primarily just because it's morning, and the uh, 
even though the sun is kind of at your back at this point, the sun washing down through the canyon uh, with your delicate drow eyes, they're, they're just, uh, you know, you can, all you kind of see is just, I would imagine these dark shapes staying in one location, kind of doing something, but you don't really have any idea what. And uh, Sept and Donabella, from your vantage point, you're on the other side of this, like, I don't know, 20 foot wall. I can't remember what it says they are, but uh, you can't see anything. You can't even see the orcs and you can't hear them either from where you're at. Yeah, I'll say we give them a minute. If they don't come, perhaps make a little bit of noise to try to get them to come here. I'm going to pull out my bow very slowly. Yeah, so as, as a, a bit of time goes by, I can imagine you guys are being very patient there. And um, they're not really moving. You don't really, you know, you don't know why. They're just, they're just sort of, again, made this sort of resting spot out there. And they aren't advancing in through the doors. Though you can pretty much surmise the only reason they would be coming down through this canyon would be to go into the temple. There's no other reason to come down this way. Not sure what, why they're not trying to, you know, look for some loot right now. They're playing smart. Orcs aren't smart. <laughs> yeah, this is strange. Um, I assume there's sort of like a loose brick or a loose like rock lying at my feet Everywhere. somewhere. There's nothing but yeah. loose brick and rock. <laughs> I'm gonna sort of throw i'm gonna pick one up and throw one just outside the wall sort of like here ish okay yeah that doesn't require any strength or dexterity or anything like that so yeah i'm just gonna say you pick up a rock you throw it um on that direction you indicated there and you now have raised their notice they're now oh, oh, sort of orcish guttural sounds and now they're sort of uh advancing forward uh you know i wouldn't say super carefully but you know defensively and they're starting to come toward the gate and they're not through the gate they're not even uh let me see one second let me look at my other image that i have here one moment mm. so briefly i'm going to put you onto this other image so that's you can see where the gates are let me resume that. yeah uh, oh yeah, just on there. Yeah, so that that would be the gates. So originally, let me just grab some tokens here. So kind of what you were seeing was when you looked through, you saw these uh, three orcs just kind of coming in about, and and Sept was able to tell they were orcs, but. Yeah, Xandro, you, as you looked out, you could just see sort of these amorphous blobs of black and or, or dark color, dark brown, something. Couldn't really tell what they were. But once you threw the rock, I'm going to say that they advanced up to here. So they're now not super far away from you guys. Let me check that out. Yeah, 30, 40 feet, something like that. And uh, once they moved up this far, they're just kind of pausing and looking for the source of the sound, you know, maybe thinking uh, a, could have been a bird that fluttered by or whatever, but they're just kind of still, you know that you know, if you ever walk through the woods and you hear something, you just kind of stop and you look and you try to monitor your breathing. That's kind of what they're doing right now. They're just looking around to see if they can figure out where that sound came from. This is quite strange. Orcs are not known to be this careful. Are these are really clever? Or then orcs? And I would say at this point you can kind of tell maybe a little bit about what they were up to before because uh, the one here, let me actually indicate these guys with colors. One second, oops. Let's make this one Mr. Blue. Let's make this one Mr. 
I always click the wrong thing. Green. And we'll make this one purple. So the one that was over here, you can kind of hear him slash see him grinding his weapon against a uh, basically like a whetstone or something sharpening. That's and uh, yeah, roll, roll me perception. Alrighty. Uh, perception, yeah. Yeah. Oh, only thirteen. Oh. Boop. Yeah. So thirteen as well. Yeah. So you don't really, you can't really determine anything based on you know what you can see at the moment, but uh, they're just sort of. You can tell from this point they're preparing, you know, they're, they're sharpening weapons, they're tending to their weapons. That's about all you can tell. They're going to remain quiet back there. I will for at most five more minutes. He's get over here fucking soon. Well, a little bit more time passes, I'd say just a minute or so, and they don't hear anything. So uh, they continue forward a bit more. And they're kind of maybe spreading themselves out a little bit too. Kind of like you can imagine that, her, you. And then the other one, like, her, kind of pointing, you know, spreading themselves out. So now they are quite close to the, uh, to the gate, just 20 feet away. Maybe a bit more time passes and they advance forward a bit more. Okay. Um, shoots. Shoot. I've drawn my bow. I was. Uh, yeah, I think Sept Sep will just you know, continue to wait for them to. Enter the gates. Okay, so yeah, don't have a lot. Few more moments go by. They're just kind of cautiously, you know, as cautious as they can be, moving forward. And I'm gonna start bringing their tokens over to this one now. I'm gonna say he's about there. Uh, that one disappeared on me. Oh, there it is. And this one. Let's put him. Let's make him the leader. And let me go ahead and color code these again. Uh, right, I'm going to have to shrink the image to do it. Yeah, roll 20 has some quirky behavior to it. There we go. So that's the blue one. Green one. Purple one. There we go. All right, so... So yeah, this guy is right at the gate now. And uh, if you're where you are, I, he can see you, but... I'm assuming you saw him coming first, obviously, because you were back here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just, like, preparing for, like, one of them to, like, walk walk by in melee range, if possible. I can roll stealth if you want me to. Yeah, um, I can as well. Yeah, I would say that's probably a good idea, because uh, if you haven't fired at them by the time they're up to this point. Well, I mean, I'm invisible. Uh, only 12. You're invisible? Oh, see, no, it's only 8. It's only 8. I have disadvantage. Because of my skill mail. Okay. And Xander, did you say you're invisible? <laughs> oh, no, I got a natural 20. So. Oh, oh I, get, I get it. You're kidding around, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so they don't hear you as they're as they're getting up towards the gate, but you know, based on your positions, I would say you know you're all there. You are within visual uh, sight of him at this point. So roll initiative. Oh. Let me roll initiative for these. I'm just gonna do one initiative for all three. Oh, oops. Let me. Good. That's fine with me. Yeah, I got a seven. Oh, I just didn't click my character. Okay. So you're a seven. I am. No, I'm six. You're six. All right. So let's make that a six. 
And if you want to roll Donna Bella's initiative, Xandru, and I'll roll for that. Uh, I'll roll that. Uh, did you get a bonus to initiative? What's that dexterity? Open up my character sheet on my phone. And I'm going to add in these guys. All right, so Don't one initiative Donna for Bella. all of them. I uh, just get a plus one to her initiative. She's got a 17. All right. So she's 17, so she'll go second. All right, so um, the orcs come through the doors, and right when they, right when this orc gets uh, sort of peeking his head through, through he spots you, Zandro, and I'm going to say a second. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's not what he says. He says... <laughs> food kill no I don't quite know what mannerisms and works are but he is going to uh, he's close enough to hit you right just I think he has to walk forward one space and then he can hit me yeah I'm going to say he's not quite close enough uh, by the time he saw you to just lash out with his weapon so he's going to throw a javelin at you and that's going oh, to be nice yeah, he's gonna. He's pretty close, so he's gonna throw that, and that's plus five to hit. So that's seventeen. Seventeen hits. Seventeen hits. And by the way, did you guys increase your HP from last session? Yes. yes. Okay. So, so Let me actually put that in my bar so you can see it. Oops, hang on. I rolled the wrong dice. My bad. Not rolling a d twenty for damage. <laughs> twenty damage, huh? So that is six damage. Six, oof. All right. So he kind of stays there in this next. Let me see, what's this guy? So yeah, he kind of, this next one just kind of comes charging through the door and moves up this way. And You know, these grids are a bit awkward. Let me, he's obviously not going to do that. He's going to, there we go. So he's going to come through and he's going to swing at you with his uh, great axe. Swing it set. And let's look at my dice. So that's four plus five is nine. Nine doesn't hit, doesn't. No, it looks like no, you have an AC of 18. Not. Okay. So that was his turn. He kind of flubbed it. As it, I imagine as he's walking through the door, he kind of turns and sees you there and comes over and takes a swing, but he's a bit disoriented at this point. So then the next one comes through the door kind of over this way and uh, does the same thing. He kind of swings at you, Xander, with his great axe. Uh-oh. Seven plus five is eight. Eight is 12. That's a miss. That is, yeah, plus five, okay. All right, so those guys, uh, the orcs came through, took their turn. So what are you going to have Donabella do? Uh, I want Donabella to cast Bless on everybody. Okay. Um, so that'll be on her, on Set, and on Xandro. Because I think we're all in range. It's a 30-foot range. So yeah. Set's obviously in range. Yep, Xandro's in range. Uh, meaning, uh, whenever a target makes an attack roll or saving throw before the spell ends, the target can roll a d4 and add that to the number rolled. Doesn't that last for like a minute or something it, like that? It lasts up to a minute for however long she's concentrating on it. Okay. So if she does another spell with concentration, like Guidance, for example... Um, then the spell will end. Okay. Is she going to stay put, or is she going to move? Is she in melee range? Of... Yes, he's in melee oh, range right. of her. So, uh, she's going to stay put. All right. Xandro. Okay. Xandro uh, is going to hit, trying to hit this orc with his... Oh, fuck. Shit. With his rapier. 
that is a hit huge time. Yeah, it's not the critical, uh, unfortunately, because I do have disadvantage on attack rolls. Okay, right, right. So it's only a 19, but I assume that still hits. Yeah. Amazing. Is that 20? It's only 12. It's only 12, okay. Well, okay, so... Yeah. Uh, it's counting the crit. Yeah, go ahead. so go ahead and describe that. How does that attack look like? Um, so I've just been hit with this javelin. Uh, as this other orc runs up and tries to hit me with their great axe, I managed to parry that, uh, and when one swift move, I sort of lash at their gut, sort of, sort of like, like fencing style sort of movement, very cat-like, very swift. Yeah, and as you do that, you can you can tell like you just did massive damage to this thing. It's 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 balled over in pain and is uh, cursing at you and in the orcish at this point so that's gonna be his turn and, and at I, that i'm gonna disengage and sort of run up that way a little bit okay and you can do that it's i've got that as a bonus action all right so as a bonus action i can dash disengage or hide just making a note of the colors here so i keep track of the damage on these things all right sep so that's going to be your go all right. Um, I would like to get into like the middle of like all these orcs, um, and then I would like to like uh, slam my mace into the ground, casting bane on all three of them. Okay. Building get chats, and to describe it as like my mace collides with the ground. These are sort of like spectral, mummified hands uh, come out of the dirt and just like grab onto the orc's legs. Okay. And all three of them individually have to make a charisma saving throw? Yes. And they get that on that. So, uh, so I'm going to roll three d20s and what do I have to beat? 13. Okay, so... Actually, it's probably higher than that. Let me check. I oh, know it's only 13. All right, so I'm going to roll green first. Green does not beat it, so it's baned. Purple. You said 13? Yes. Yeah, just almost, but he missed. And blue also missed, so they are all baned. All right. Oh, shit. That's good. Yeah. So, in and that... okay. before my turn ends, I just yell out, Are you all ready to meet Gromps? Gromps. Gromps. <laughs> yeah, they just curse at you and orc. Do you speak orc? Because I know you speak like every language. No. Not a lot. All right. Too All right. barbaric. So the orcs go, and so they are baned, which means they have to roll everything with disadvantage, or at least their attack uh, roll. No, when they make attack rolls, they have to roll d4 and subtract that from the roll. Okay. It's like the opposite of bless. Right, right. Yeah, basically. All right, so Mr. Purple is going to uh, stay put and just take a swing at you. He's going to curse out an orcish and swing at you with this great axe. So I'm going to roll my d20 and then uh, subtract four. Or one d4. Yes. Okay, so that it's not going to matter because that's too low, so it's not going to hit even uh, with the... Uh, D4 is just going to make it even worse. So he missed. And then I'm going to say that uh, the green one steps maybe slightly this way and swings at Donabella with his great axe. Uh, would that be a tech opportunity? I don't know because, I mean, he's technically, I think, still in range here. Well, I mean, and he's if staying he, like, in range. Moves out, may he was out of melee range from me. Oh, yeah, good point. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to allow it because I, I goofed and didn't think of it. So I'm going to say, you know, he's got his back turned to you. He's not paying attention to the fact that you're behind him. And he steps forward right. to take a swing at Donabella. And as he does... Oh, only 11. 11. Oh, yeah, bless. Uh, 13. Just hits. Oh, thank fuck. You stay uh, away six. from Donabella. 
Let's, all right, so that's six. Which would be, let me think, math. Oh yeah, that number, okay. All right, so he kind of, as he steps forward and starts swinging at Donabella, he feels this, um, what did you hit him with? A mace? Yeah, just a basic mace. He feels himself getting clubbed over the back of the head, and he's like, <laughs> then he swings at Donabella and rolls. Uh, let me see. That, nope, that, I'm assuming her AC is higher than five. Her AC... Uh, it is higher than or, excuse five. Me, higher yes. than ten. <laughs> higher than ten. It's higher than ten. Yeah, because I forgot they had the plus five. So, um, yeah, just higher than ten. Yeah. So, I I, I imagine what he does. Is so as he's again has his back turned to Sept and isn't quite paying attention to the battlefield. Steps forward to take a swing at Donabella. Feels this crack of the mace over the back of his head, and it just totally throws him off his balance. And as he swings with this great axe, he. Uh, misses her just by the smallest amount. Which takes us to Mr. Blue. And I'm going to say from where he's standing, he's just going to throw his javelin at Sept. So he kind of just rears back and whoosh, looses his javelin. And that is a 20. Not a natural 20, but a 20 adjusted. Uh... With the D4. Right, right. Minus D4, thank you. Get a chance to roll my other D4s that I don't normally use. I got these. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. Uh, your camera's off. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah, I'm... I'm not using the camera feature roll twenty. That's, that's can you saw. see? I mean, I can see myself on my side. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, I can, I can see you now. But it, basically, I got these because they're they're D fours. I like Roman numerals. Uh -huh. Well, it, instead of being the triangular D four, which doesn't roll worth a dang. Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah. So first time I've ever got to use one. So that's going to be minus three. So that's fifteen minus three, which is. 12 plus 5 is 17, so it misses. Oh. Yep, it misses. Good thing for the, for the Bane. All right, so sorry about that. It took a while. Uh, that's it for the Orcs. Donna Bella. Donna Bella is gonna... Okay, um... I don't like how she's like. Actually, tell you what. She's gonna do sacred flame on green. Okay. So that means you need to make a DC twelve, and I'm sure it's a dexterity. Yeah, DC twelve dexterity save. Okay, so, and then if if I have a plus one modifier, I roll a D twenty and add the plus one. Yep. All right. And you set it to 12? Yep. All right. I will actually roll it in the open. Miss. Okay. Right, I mean, so I missed the save. <laughs> he takes seven radiant damage. Seven radiant damage. Oh, my gosh. So, Mr. Green, he just gets this ball of radiant fire right in his face, and it just completely messes him up you can tell that this thing is on its last leg it's it's extremely damaged and it looks like a flick of the a flick on the nose would just about take it out all right so i she has to stay put i assume um well unless you can sort of move through this area she's sort of cornered yeah you can um, move uh, again because these are this is ruins these things are not any higher than than like a stone it's just like the, Matt. You can imagine. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, but I guess if she moves, she would take an attack of opportunity. Yes. All right. So, assuming I'm assuming you're going to leave her put. All right. So that brings. You know us... what? No, she's gonna. She she is gonna move sort of right next to Xander, I think, just to be out of the way. Okay. So she gets an attack of opportunity. 
Yes, I'm hoping the Bane works to our advantage here. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, all right. I'm gonna roll, roll out in the open again. So it's gonna. I'm gonna say as Mr. Green sees her sort of taking off, he's gonna swing at her with his great axe. So can you oh, see? Oh yeah, can that's you see how I rolled that? Hit. So I did the d20 <laughs> yeah. plus the five to hit minus the bane. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then it is a. Look one more time. I just looked. Oh, okay. She takes eight. That is a good hit. Yeah. Yep. All right, just okay. making sure. Because, like, I'm after, sure that. out of character givers, I just, after last week, I had to fudge a few things, and I was like, uh, I'm going to be a little bit more transparent this time. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. She's on five health. But she did manage to move, is that correct? Mm hmm. She's moved up to where Xander is now. All right. I can't move her, so. You're going to oh, move right, her. right. I remember seeing there was a way for me to give control. I'll see if I can do that while you take your turn. Cool. Okay. So for my turn, I'm going to run up and do another. I'm going to do a thrust with my rapier up against uh, purple. Okay. With disadvantage. Um, plus, there's a 14 plus. hit. Or 14 would hit. Plus, plus. But yeah, you don't need it. Yeah. So that's seven piercing seven damage on purple. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. So um, he's dead. Describe what it. Describe what you did. So as I run up, I'm gonna do a quick thrust, uh, sort of to the throat, uh, just like quick in and out, sort of thing. Like rip his throat open. Yeah, basically. Okay, very cool. Uh, just I for was going to disengage, but uh, I don't think I'll need to. I'll just stay put here. See if you can move Donabella now, because I... Yeah, I can. All right, very cool. So now, yeah. I, now I know how to do that. All right, so that is you and then Sept. Um, knowing that green is very hurt, I think I'm just going <laughs> to like hold up my holy symbol, and you'll just see some sacred flame... Um, leave it towards this orc. Um, oh, pff, DC 13. Okay. Um, deck save. Okay, deck save. So let me just check. So that's that. All right. And I'll roll in the open again, just to be transparent with you guys. Ah. Oh, just yeah, saves. It it. Or wait, no, it favors the attacker. Oh. Right? I mean, that's like when you attack with your weapon. If, if I have an armor class of 13 and you hit 13, now I don't know if it works in reverse for saving things. Uh, I think how we decided uh, in my game is that sort of the, the save is what the defender has to make. So it always go... In, in, in terms of saving throws, it will go to the defender. Okay. But everything else will go to the attacker. Do you want to? Do one of you want to take two seconds to look that up just to verify? So uh, I'm pretty sure it goes to the defender in terms of saving throws. I think that's where okay. I read it somewhere. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and make that call. If you find out otherwise, then we'll change that later. I'll Google that now. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead and take a second to verify that because I don't have a. Um. These lightweight rules. I don't even know if they will tell me that for sure. Matching the DC on saving throws. 5A. Let's see. That's equipment. Or actually, hold on. I think with Bane, they actually has to like subtract it, subtract it from the same. They do device, have but... to take, yeah. Oh, right. With Bane, they have to subtract 1d4. So, because <laughs> even if I subtract guaranteed one, to fail, then. Yeah, it, it is guaranteed to fail because I can't roll a zero, so. Yeah. So uh, let's just, for fun, what would it have been? So it would have been 10. So that answers that. 
there we go but yeah if we can uh, find out definitively on that other thing that'll be good to know for future reference so uh, regardless uh, green you were aiming towards has failed the saving throw so it takes how much radiant damage this two radiant two rate believe it or not that's enough to take it down because it was amazing it was on its last leg like it literally took two more points to bring it down okay so um are you going to move or stay put um i think i'll actually get into melee range with blue i'm kind of tired of this shit. <laughs> no right. i'm sick of this shit <laughs> Question, as you step into melee range, does he get an attack of opportunity? No. No. Okay. All right. Tell me when you step now. Step out. All right. I'll try to keep that in mind. So, so yeah, Sept, you uh, just incinerated his friend, and I don't know, he probably can't see it, but he can hear the orcish cries, has a decent idea what's going on, and it's his turn. And since you're, like, all up in his face, he's just going to swing at you with his great axe. And that's going to be... Uh, plus that, and then minus Bane, right? Yep. All right. So he rolled a four, all told, which is obviously going to be going to be a miss. So he's all disoriented, standing there in the doorway, swings with his great axe, misses completely, and just hits the side of the door. And that's it I for him. I told you you're going to meet Grunch. <laughs> Donabella. Donabella's up. Um, this is the last orc. So I think what Donabella's going to do, sort of move up a little bit up here. She's going to do another sacred flame, which is dexterity saving throw of 12. So I gotta roll a d20 and then subtract 1d4 because it's a saving throw? Yes. Okay. And let me see, do I add anything to it? Just no. a dexterity modifier. Okay, so that's... So let's do that. 14. That is... Yeah, they do succeed. Okay. Yeah, so I imagine right. the orc just kind of manages to see her off in the distance and right as that f thing's coming towards him he just moves at the very last second and just goes whizzing by his head Sandro okay do I have good line of sight on this orc or is Set sort of blocking him I think you have good line of sight uh, maybe not ideal but this orc is down and out of the way and uh, you know since Sept is friendly, you know, I'm saying you guys are working together basically and you know, he kinda knows what you're up to back there and yeah, he can duck out of the way at the okay. very last second, that's how I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna draw my bow and sort of aim it. Uh take very steady aim, uh even though I can't see shit. Um I'm just gonna shout Duck as I release the arrow. Sept obliges uh short bow does an 18 hit yeah and i think you also get the 1d4 advantage you don't need it but right you would still i don't need religion it. yeah you also get the sneak attack yeah. i do so, get a sneak attack um let me just add that 1d6 that's seven damage all right so yeah um uh, you're, you're shooting a, an arrow, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... It, I actually mark that off. So this arrow just goes, you know, whizzing over Sep's head or by his shoulder or something like that and just hits the hits the orc square in the shoulder. <coughs> and You can tell it uh, has clearly messed him up, but uh, in comparison to some of the other hits you've seen, you can tell it wasn't as bad of a strike as you have seen previously, so he's still standing. Which takes us he's to... Oh, are you going to move? Um, No, no, I think I'm good here. Okay, so Sept. Alright, um, I'm basically going to attempt to uppercut the orc with a flick of wind. Oh, fucking aces. 
A 14? 14, and do you get any pluses, and do I get any minuses? Well, I can add the... My the bless. Um, yeah, go ahead and add it. So, oh, 18. 18, so yeah. As, this uh, is like a regular attack. Yeah, so as you call on your uh, inflict wounds, I imagine you just grab them by the throat or something like that. Yeah, and I deal... See how much overkill I can get. Um, are your next speed slow? Was the page updating or something? For some reason, it's oh, not work. I saw, I saw you dis you disappeared and came back. Oh, nineteen necrotic. Nineteen Holy necrotic. shit! Yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, he just turns into like a pile of melted flesh right before your eyes, just and is just completely gone. Yeah. Yeah, I just look look at the now almost skeletal body, and and I just say, "Go with Grosh, Grosh." All right, so that takes care of that encounter with those orcs. Uh, I'm I'm gonna shout over to Seth. Uh, all right, you need to teach me how to do that. <laughs> Are you ready to play your life? Amazing. Are you ready to pledge your life to the the old gods? All right, maybe oh, I won't go that far, but gods of Mulan. I might go somewhere. Can we meet halfway in the middle? Eh, sorry, it took me years for Faf to speak with me. It's might be a little longer for you. Ah. Oh. Alright, well, at least teach her how to do it and sort of like uh, indicate over to Donabella. She seems a spiritually connected lass. I'm sure it won't take her that long. Spiritually connected? She burnt one of the orcs' face. She's good. Uh, oh, yes. Donabella's kind of going around and looking at the orcs and inspecting them and. You can see her, she's like trying to pick up one of these great axes and deciding if it's worth taking and she kind of just leaves, leaves it be and grabs a javelin instead. So she's carrying a javelin. Yeah, um, I'm just going to like look through like the orcs' pockets, see if I can like find any evidence to why they're here besides like just, you know, pillaging. I'm going to do the same, but for gold. Okay. So, yeah, roll, uh, what would that be, like, investigation type of thing? Let's see. For both of us? Yeah, anybody that's looking. Uh, oh, 20. Fuck. Investigation. <laughs> Can't say shit, mate. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, Xandro, as you're trying to go through these, uh, orcs, looking for anything that might give you any clues you're just you're just lost like yeah you don't know the sun is giving you a headache or something and you're blinded imagine the um the sun is reflecting off the gray axes and getting into my eyes <laughs> yeah yeah uh sept as you do a, a check around you your expert scholarly ways just uh first thing you notice is instantly you can see that all three of the orcs were carrying great axes and they each had a javelin, so if you guys want to take that stuff with you or just leave it be, uh, leave that up to you. Uh, as far as, like, you know, why these guys are here, um, I'm going to say you, can, you, can, you get the idea that they were, they were driven out of wherever they come from by the dragon, the, uh, the, the white dragon that's been flying around that you guys already know about. You get the impression that uh, just based on the things that they're carrying with them and their, the fact that they're coming here at all just kind of tells you that they're, they're seeking some sort of hiding ground from the dragon. And that's about all you can tell. Um, yeah, I just say it looks like they were perhaps hiding from the 
the dragon. Yeah, and I would I would even say with with your investigation, you're extremely confident that that's what they were up to. Yeah, I don't see any other reason why 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 a trio of orcs will come to a uh, well abandoned temple. Nah, you never know these days. Yeah, so Donabella just kind of gets behind you guys and is just going to follow you, whatever you do. Yeah, well, Set has like zero interest in like the weapons of the orcs, so he just begins to walk back to town. Yeah, I, I assume Xander doesn't find anything sort of worth anything, so he's just going to follow along. Yeah, except at his investigation, you guys don't find any money in their pockets, no gemstones, nothing other than just the cheap weapons they had and some orc food that you probably aren't terribly interested in, considering that you have your own rations and water and wineskin and all that. All right, so with that said, let me put you guys back out onto the open road. I really wish ignore that screen I just I don't have any way to slide further down and ignore that screen <laughs> like I just, I can't put you on the screen I want so you're back out. flashbacks yeah like you know you know like in some programs when you pull past the area it just scrolls the window basically it doesn't do that in this one so I just have to I can only go down so far so <clears throat> anyway yeah you guys are back out on the open road <clears throat> traveling back to Phandalin and um, you headed out fairly early in the morning so um, it's not going to take you too terribly long to get back I think it was only like a five hour trip something something along those lines so uh, throughout the course of your travels you you don't run into anything nothing um, nothing's out on the open road trying to eat you guys uh, you don't notice the dragon flying by or anything like that in fact you guys have yet to actually see this rumored dragon but you're pretty confident that it exists because of uh, the behavior of everybody around and so many accounts of people talking about it and having seen it so approximately five six hours something like that goes by and you arrive back in ye old Fandolin, probably coming back in from the uh, south Exit of the town. Oops. Let me... Constantly adjusting screens and scrolling and all that. Did I? I did put you on Fantly. I did. Okay, just checking. And as you guys arrive into Fandolin, um, it's it's you know as busy as this little town can be. People are out and about doing their things, tending to uh, whatever they can. Ever vigilant of this guy, of course, but, uh, you know, work has to be done. People have to uh, go to places, farm fields, do whatever it is they do. So there, there is activity, but um, cautiously, cautious activity. So when you get into Fandolin, where do you guys want to go? Straight to the town, Master. Yeah. Um, yeah, set this, like, walk towards the town master's <clears> hall. <throat> really say anything okay as we get there i'm gonna eagerly knock on his door so yeah you, you guys knock on the door and again you hear that scuffling about inside and a little bit of time passes and uh you hear trepid footsteps coming towards the door and you hear if you're a dragon know that I'm far too thin and bony to make a good meal. And then he just pauses. Like last time, uh, we're not dragons. That's exactly what a dragon would say. Yes, we are not dragons, I say in Draconic. Oh. That sounds like a dragon to me, he says. All right. Oh, All right. no. I we... just know the language. Only a dragon would know the language of a dragon. He starts to walk away. He's got yeah. No, wait. What? We've got we've wait. got uh, the job done. The dwarves. Yes, yeah. yeah, set. Uh, just like whispers under his breath. Fucking idiots. 
Um, he pauses and <laughs> starts to slowly come back to the door when he hears you talking about the dwarven job because he, he, he's clearly, he knows he sent you on that journey. So he comes back and, uh, so you, uh, you finished that you, you notified the dwarves. Yeah. They sent, uh, they sent a note back. I'm going to sort of like slide it underneath the door. So yeah, it, when it starts to get under the doorway, he kind of pulls it in the rest of the way and. There's a small pause there of silence while he reads over the note and he says, uh, ah, yes, that's very good. I, I recognize the handwriting and okay. So, uh, I, I trust that you're not the dragon and, uh, excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for notifying the dwarves. Then he just stops. And our payment. Oh, of, of course, of course. Yes, I did promise that I would give you guys. Uh, how much was it again? You said fifty gold. Fifty, 50. gold. Are you sure? I would never pay so much for something. Are you sure it was fifty? That's what it says you said. on the board. Hmm. I saw. I go to pull off the note and put that under the door as well. <laughs> So he he takes the, uh, the 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 quest note that he gave you and he looks it over. He's like, "Oh right, right, right. Fifty gold it is." So, by the way, did you knew there were some orcs in the area? I I didn't know there were orcs in that area, but there are orcs everywhere. So it doesn't surprise me. He kind of yeah, pushes the note back out of the door the, at you, and we had to deal with a trio of the savages. Oh. We did deal with a lot of issues uh, in the job and on the way back. I think that deserves a little bit extra, don't you? Well, all I told you was to notify the dwarves any other extracurricular activities that you guys engaged in. That that was on your dime. But 50 gold was promised. 50 gold's what you'll get. And you hear this while he's saying some of these things. There's this like jingling sound. He's messing with something. And... uh eventually after a few moments go by you can hear like a sliding sound and you look down and you see a gold coin that was uh slid underneath the door are you gonna do that 49 more times a second later you see another gold coin slide under the door just open the fucking door <laughs> holy gods <laughs> i am not opening the door there could be a dragon Hiding if a behind dragon you guys. wants, if a dragon wants to eat you, he'll just burn down your entire house, or crash into it. He's, you know how strong they are, right? It, as you guys are saying these things, he's continually sliding, literally one gold coin at a time under the door, and he's just saying, "You know, be that as it may, I feel safe inside this house. Maybe it's just simply a security blanket, nothing more, but." It's my security blanket. You don't even have to open it all the way. Just open the door a crack, yes, just hand out the sack, enough. and we'll take yes, it and you can close please. it again. Oh yeah, I open the door a crack, and then a dragon bursts the door all the way open. I don't think so. Okay, first off, one, only metallic dragons can actually take the form of a human. And two, even if it was a metallic dragon, they usually... Wait, 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 wait. Why, how, how do you know so much about dragons? Are you a dragon? I'm a historian. He's a nerd. I'm a nerd. Uh, I mean, yeah, historian. He's still sliding coins one at a time. Eventually, eventually, it takes him a little while, but eventually he does get all 50. He's, like, counting them as he's going just to make sure he doesn't, like, overpay you guys. This guy's fucking insane. Yeah, Will that be all? This, like... Yeah. Finally, quick question. <coughs> yep. You're not... You're not hiding something, are you? I'm hiding from something. I, I see that, but... Like I said, if a dragon wants to eat you, it'll just break down the wall. and take care of you. If a dragon breaks down the walls and takes care of me, then so be it. But I'm not going to give him any extra opportunity that is absolutely necessary. So I will stay locked in here if you don't mind. And even if you do mind, quite frankly, I don't care. Honestly, sure. I start picking up um, 25 gold. 
Uh, and once I picked it all up, I'm gonna shove it in my pack and say, like, just leave this like, just leave this dickhead here. He's clearly gone mad. <laughs> As you guys are saying that, he says, uh, "Before you take off, I, I got a question for you guys." Yes. Okay. Well, since you survived going down and warring the dwarves and apparently taking it upon yourselves to do combat with orcs and whatever else rambling it is that you were talking about, I have a couple of other jobs I would be interested in having you guys look into if you're interested or have you had enough of this adventuring? Uh, if there's gold, I'm in. What you got? Well, I don't have all the details quite yet, but if you come back in a few hours, I'll, I'll have the information you need. I'm still putting together, dotting my I's, crossing my T's, so to speak, and uh, yeah, I, I don't have all the details quite yet, but give me a few hours, come back by, or swing by in the morning, and, uh, and I'll, have, I'll have the details for you. <sighs> all right, then. Well, I would like to get something to eat first anyways. Yeah, gives us a good chance to get some mail down us. Yeah, yeah, go have something to eat and, uh, you know, replenish any supplies you need because you're going to be heading out again if you decide to take this job. And uh, so, yeah, just come back by later and I'll have everything you need. By the <clears> way, <throat> we know about the other two starting class, right? Not yet. Okay, okay. So yeah. two others, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the way I'm the way I'm running it, you haven't right. been. Well, That's, let me let me rephrase okay. that. Let me rephrase. Actually, you've been told that there are other jobs available, but no details have been provided. But oh, okay, he did. Got he, you. When you guys came and saw the town master last time, he did say, uh, "Yeah, I have a couple of other jobs, but I really want you to do go down and warn the doors first. So you already know that uh, he had something else. You don't necessarily know that what he's talking about now is the same thing, but yeah. Okay, got you. All right. Um, Sept is going to take his share of the payments and Off the floor. <laughs> yeah, still very annoyed by this townmaster's ridiculous choice of delivery and. He's just going to head over to the inn. Uh, I'm going to follow you. And as I sort of... Um, yeah, as I sort of take the path, sort of shout, shout over to Donabella and say, Your meal's on me. You did a good job. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm touched. I just realized we're not actually paying her despite her help. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pay her in food and alcohol. Yeah. Seth what more has, you need? No, has no problem not paying her unless he brings it up. Out of character, Honestly. yeah. Sidekicks think meat shields and damage dealers or something. You know? Oh, but I like Donabella. I do want to pay her, but 50 is half to the 5 by 3 Yeah. So, fuck it. <laughs> yes. Hey, you guys could take 24 each and give her two gold or something. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so you said you're heading to the Stone Hill in. Yes. So let me take you over there. All right. Don't actually have a token for the the uh, the guy managing the Stonehill Inn. I keep forgetting his name. His last name is Stonehill. Um, I know that. Yeah. I think, um, it's, uh, it's, I think it begins with an I. Or am I, I thinking of I think it starts with a Toblin. T? Yeah, Toblin. Oh, top, okay. Toblin yeah. or Toblin. Uh, Toblin. Yeah. He's kind of always around that place, but uh, so yeah, I would imagine you know as you guys walk into the Stone Hill and you see the familiar uh, Toblin standing there behind the bar and ah, welcome back, you guys. Uh, you said you were uh, heading out yesterday. Something about dwarves. Are you uh, done with that, or you haven't gone out yet, or what's going on with that? Ah, uh, they're all safe. They're fine. Yeah, we took care of their issues. Oh, well, just out of curiosity, you know, if you don't mind my asking, I don't mean to intrude, 
um, what was all that about anyway? I'm, don't I hear stories here and there from adventures coming in and out, so I'm always interested in hearing, uh, living vicariously perhaps through you guys. Well, it just started off as a simple courier job, but uh, it turned out to be a monster hunt, oh. which is amazing. Uh, I'll uh, take yeah. your word for that. And he's just kind of there polishing a glasses. Orchid, a orchid jelly took up residence in the ruined temple that the dwarves were excavating. An orchid jelly? What on earth is that? It's like uh, a jelly. Right, but when you hit it with like something sharp, I think it splits into two. So you're being attacked by the stuff that my patrons put onto their bread. Think of it like a giant banana slug. Weird. Yeah, adventuring. Uh, it's for some people, but I'm content to just run this in. Oh, jelly. Yeah, sorry. Um. Yeah, well, that's, um, that's the life. Well, what can I do for you guys? Are you going to be hanging around another night, or what's going on? Well, I guess I'll just take something simple this time. Just, uh, just a simple meal and some water will do it for me today. All right. So, uh, what about you and you? He points to Donabella and, and Xandro. Give me your finest ale mixed with your finest meal. Made that too. I sort of look over at Donabella and smile. Oh, uh, well, that's easy to do because our finest is also the same as our regular. So, that'll be, uh, that'll be a silver piece each. Uh, are you planning on staying the night or are you going to run out before the day's over. Uh, what's the time at the moment, out of character? Yeah, so you guys woke up probably uh, eight, nine, something like that, and I'm going to say you maybe spent a couple hours roughly before you were able to leave the temple and then five hours out on the road. So what does that put you back here around 5 p.m. roughly? 5 p.m. Yeah, cause I'm, I think it takes about five hours to travel down, because it's 15 miles. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, just for future, future reference, if you're going at a normal uh, pace, it's usually uh, three miles per hour. Okay, so 15 divided by three is five. Yeah. Yeah. So five hours. And that's about yeah, what I hours. figure, and, and maybe, you know, and I would say that would be, at best case scenario, uh, traveling through maybe not always ideal terrain with clear-cut trails and everything, it, it might add like an hour or something to your travels. So, but yeah, I would say you're back around 5 p.m., maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later, but judging, you know, uh, I would actually say basically judging from the daylight you can tell that you're getting into Phandalin around the same time, um, maybe even a little earlier, just slightly earlier than you did when you first arrived, a couple days prior, based on shadows and whatnot. Okay. Right. I mean, I'm going to need to meet the town master in a couple of hours. Yeah. Oh, we could try to sell those gems we found. Oh yeah, definitely hundred percent. All right, so by now your your food's up there at the bar or whatever. If you're at the table, of the bar, and he's uh, got your water, and otherwise he's occupied. He's in the back doing his uh, keep keeping keeping to his end kind of thing. And while you guys are there at the bar eating, you see my lost two silver. Which one this was? Yep. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I did not prepare this token, so I'm going to borrow from something else temporarily. Let's go 
completely my bad, sorry. Actually, for the time being, I'll just just uh, theater the mine instead of using tokens. But essentially, you see a, uh, a small being walk in through the door. A small being. A small person. And, uh, small person, like um, wolf or halfling? Yeah, you can definitely tell it's a halfling. Okay. Huh. And the Mars is a scene one of those fellows. He just kind of walks in and plops his little tiny, basically climbs up onto the bar stool. Does he like sit next to B or Xandro? Well, I'm not exactly sure where you guys are sitting if you're like down this way. Oh, I'm probably like right here. Yeah, he kind of, he does the polite thing and kind of sits, you know, one seat away, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a halfling, he's a happy little guy. As he pulls yeah, up the I seat just, there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just try to mind my own business and, you know, just enjoy my meal. I'm going to look over him occasionally, uh, but not, not to, like, stare at him too long to make it awkward, uh, but just give... Uh, just quick peeks to see what he's like. Yeah, so he, he seems uh, just congenial, you know, friendly enough. Perhaps a bit doofusy looking, but still nice enough of a of a of a of a of a, of a, of a being. But eventually, you know, he he grows a bit tired of waiting for you guys to say something, and he sort of uh, looks over and says, uh, "Hey, how's it going? How are you guys?" I look uh, back at him and I say, in halfling, oh, I'm doing pretty all right. How about yourself? Oh, you speak halfling, do you? Oh, uh, I speak much more than that. Oh, very interesting. Uh, how did you learn speaking halfling? I don't meet a whole lot of humans that uh, can speak my language. Read about it. So you just learned it by books? Well, back when I was in my early 20s, I, my job was to, you know, teach history and knowledge and all that. So I figured the more languages I knew, the better. Do your friends here, he kind of points to the other two because he can see you guys all sitting together. Do they speak halfling? Oh, no. They just speak common, elvish, and the... Uh, I look towards Andrew under common. So with that, with that, uh, he... I sort of give you this like really confused look. I assume you're still uh, speaking halfling. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just like, what are you on? Yeah, as long as he speaks halfling, I'm just going to speak halfling. Yeah, I was going to say, and with that, with you telling him that uh, they don't speak halfling, he changes over to common, just sort of the polite thing to do so that uh, he's not speaking gibberish basically and so speaking in common at this point he says um yeah i just came into phandalin and uh heard about uh heard about this dragon that's terrorizing the town and looking for a uh, a bit of uh, treasure and hunting and just came back from the town master and he kind of as he says it, he's like that guy is weird he says i'm trying God, to get you're telling this. me yeah. Oh, God. Kind of laughs. He's like, yeah, he wouldn't even open the door and talk to me man to man. Yeah, you should see him when he's trying to pay a hard-working adventurer for their job. 50 gold under the door crack, one by one. Yeah. And yeah. as you say that, he slides over to the chair next to you guys. So he's sitting right next to you guys now, and he says, adventurers, huh? Well, of sorts, I suppose. You could say that. Yeah, well, that's exactly that's exactly why I'm here. And like I said, I just got back from seeing the town master. I was trying to find out about one of these jobs that I keep hearing about. That's why I came all the way to Fandolin. And uh, yeah, a guy tells me I have to come back later. So I don't know. Have you been by? Uh, have you, you? How did you get your job? Well, he came by yesterday, and he had one ready. But he told us the exact same thing as you. Come by a couple of hours later. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to like take a sip of my ale. Okay, well, what kind of work is it? What kind of work does this town master guy provide? Is it, uh, 
Is it is it difficult? You guys see you guys are a group of three, I'm only one. Think I can manage this stuff well, on my own? Well, pretty much only courier work so far. We did have to fight some beasties though. Hmm. Well, I'm kind of a fighter type myself, so yeah, I don't mind uh, a little bit of combat. I do worry though that uh, you know I haven't come here with my, you know, I haven't come here with anybody. Uh, how about uh, maybe we team up on the next job? Any chance I could tag along? Maybe you guys could uh, teach me a thing or two. Maybe I can show you a thing or two. Yeah, the more the merrier. Well, I don't see why not. Excellent, excellent. Well, he kind of looks at you and he, whoever's sitting in the stool immediately next to him, he says, yeah, my name's Quinn. Quinn? Yeah, that's uh, Q-U-I-N-N -N in common. Huh. What a name. Well, a name's a name, I suppose. The name's Set. Set? Set Amon. Set Amon. Nice to meet you, Quinn. Hi, Topple. Like yeah, if you can't right. tell, I'm not from here. Yeah, I can sort of tell that looking at both of you, and he looks at Xandro, and uh, he is familiar with the the drow, and he says, I don't see a lot of drow. Uh, and he kind of looks down at the ground and then up here. Up here. <laughs> What yeah. brings you above ground? Well, Avenger. Yeah. I got tired yeah. down there, so, you know. Life is for excitement, you know? Xandro, by the way. I'll sort of give a small, like, almost like a salute mix of the wave. Yeah. He, Quinn. Quinn High Topple. And uh, I'll give you guys this information um, through the Discord a bit later. Although, yeah, uh, Sept, obviously, you, you have the card, so you can just look at it. Yeah. He has quite the interesting card. <laughs> Ooh. Actually, let me see if I have that available really quick without taking too much time. I'll go ahead and drop it in so that because uh, I think I might actually have it. I do. Alright, so <coughs> let me go ahead and throw this into Discord so that Xandro can see who we're talking about. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything but this personality traits ah he's so goofy yeah, might, bit might of a... play a role yeah all right so yeah uh that is uh quinn and uh so now you guys are a party of four yeah four so after your finish up with your food and everything um you know, you I don't know how much time you guys spend in there, but the uh, Tobling comes back out and says, uh, so you guys going to be staying here tonight? I don't think we ever cleared up that matter. I sort of look towards the others and say, I think so. It depends what the town master wants, really. Well, at the moment, it's look yes. All right, well, I'll be here for, you know, quite a bit longer. You know, I like to go to bed myself at some point, but uh, whatever you decide, just let me know. Same rate applies as last time. It's going to be five silver each. And uh, All right, well, if we decide to, we'll be here in just a few hours. Okay. Well, in the meantime, take care. And then with that, he kind of fluffles off to the back again. And he's back here somewhere doing... Stonehill innkeeping stuff, basically. Cheeky. Alright. Uh, and at that, I sort of get up um, and say, how about we go on a shopping spree, eh? We got some uh, some things to sell. I sort of uh, start, like, sort of uh, throwing and catching on the gems. Oh, yes, uh, getting rid of these gems will be... Quinn's eyes beneficial. just kind of light up at the treasure. So you guys are heading out of, uh... Out of Stonehill Inn? 
Uh, yes. Yep. Um, I'm sort of going to quickly mention to Quinn, sort of a quick question. Uh, what do you think we could sell these priceless gems? Priceless gems? Well, I don't know that anybody can pay you something that's worth priceless. Well, okay. Say they had a price. Where could we sell them? Well, new here, but I uh, stopped by this place, Barth and something or another earlier, and picked up a uh, bit of rope. So I imagine, you know, that guy seems like he is into buying and selling. Might want to head up that way. Worth a try? I'm, I'm going to head up towards that way. Yeah, okay. you can always bet on the general goods store. Or provision store, I suppose, in this case. All right. So, uh, yeah, you guys kind of enter in from the side, and there's just all kinds of stuff lying about. And over here behind this counter is uh, somebody standing there, and they kind of look over as you walk in, and how can I help you? Ah, yes. We'd like to do some uh, some good old-fashioned trade. You wouldn't mind? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you've got... Uh, if you've got something worth buying, I've got the gold to, to buy it off you. And if you're looking for gear, and he kind of sizes you up with his eyes there, uh, adventuring gear, maybe, from the looks of you guys, I've got uh, probably everything you need. I've got rope, I've got uh, torches, I've got uh, all that kind of all that kind of stuff. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm going to walk up to the counter and just slap down the five gemstones. His eyes kind of light up there as he's looking at them. And... Yeah. I slapped down mine as well. I think... Did you guys have 10 total? I cannot recall. There were 15. Uh, Donabella took 5. Okay. Yeah, Donabella puts down her 5 as well. Yeah, he kind of looks at them and um, he pulls out one of those, like, jeweler glass things and he holds up the first one. He's kind of doing that thing where he looks through the jeweler glass and he's seeing if it's real, if it has any imperfections, if it's cracked, anything like that. And um, and he kind of goes through them one by one. He takes his time doing it. He's not super fast about it because he's wanting to make sure that these are genuine and that it's not just like one good one and a bunch of fake ones. By the time he finally yeah. gets through uh, all 15, he's like, well, I got to say, these are these are remarkable. These are These are quite remarkable. Where'd you guys find these? Oh, that's actually a funny story. We were just uh, traveling along the road on our way back from doing a uh, simple courier job, and we f we found these gems uh, off, off the road in what looks like the ruins of an abandoned cart. Mm hmm. He's listening carefully, but he's also doing that thing where he's mentally calculating, like what he can buy these off you for and still make profit kind of thing. And, um, and then, so he's just like, okay, yeah. So he's, he's busy calculating, but he's still listening to what you guys are saying. Yeah. From what we could, uh, figure out, it was going, uh, to, to one of the big cities. Very, very good gems. Yeah. Only, only the only Royals could handle these. Looks like they were heading to Neverwinter. Perhaps. Neverwinter. That's the one. And at that, he's kind of done with his little mental calculations there. And he says, well, you know, I, I, the, I'm not going to lie to you guys. These are, these are in really good shape. And um, I, the, I can give you a top, top gold for these because uh, I'm sure I can sell these and still make it worth my while. He kind of pauses for a second and he does a little bit of finger math one more time. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I can give you 15 gold each for these. And that's the best I can do. He's like, I'm not into haggling and underbidding you and then coming back with a higher offer, 15 each, take it or leave it. 15 per person or 15 per stone? 15 per stone. All right, that's fine by me. Yeah, except, um, by the way, would it be possible for me to do like a insight or some sort of check to see real quickly if set actually six of stones are worth that much, or if they're worth way more than that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, baby. 
Actually, um, one second. I ten ten each. My bad. So forget the fifteen I said. I'm, oh, I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> Pretend that he said ten. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess I'll just roll insights. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, that's quite high. And you and you were basically checking to see if he's being genuine or if he's trying to screw you guys over, basically. Yeah, because uh, Seth knows that. Uh, Obviously, he's not going to sell it for its full price. Which is, he's not going to buy it off us for its full price, but he understands it. Yeah, and you can tell he's being very genuine when he said that uh, he was giving you top dollar while still allowing himself some room to offload them a little bit more. You can tell he's being he's being very fair with you guys. He might be able to get um, a couple more gold each or something, but for his trouble, you, you feel like it's worth that i mean you you know you could probably go sell them somewhere else for a little bit more but that would be your time and trouble and is it worth it to you all right um set this uh cracks his neck neck a little bit all right that seems fair to me all right sounds good uh be right back with you boys let me just uh go in back and get your get your money and uh and meanwhile look around and he leaves your stones there on the table and then he heads back through this door and he's just back here you can hear some some clunking about and whatnot and uh, a few minutes pass and he comes back out he's got this uh bag that's got the money in it presumably and he kind of dumps it out there on the table and once all the gold coins are out he puts the uh the gems back in very carefully he's kind of individually wrapping them as he goes he's got these little cloth things that he's wrapping them up and putting them into the bigger bag and he's doing that one at a time giving you guys plenty of opportunity to count out your money and making sure that you have your 150 gold pieces uh so it's not a 75 gold each. each yeah 75 oh, each i thought we were gonna give like 50 to Don donatella it's up to you guys how you want to do that. I guess you can give it to her and then... Yeah, I mean, she has five little gemstones, so it's easy to divide by three. So yeah, yeah. She gets 50. Um, I get 50. Well, I'm going to give her half of my share, at least. Well, yeah, I'll take 50. Uh... And while all this is going on, Quinn is, like, just like gold fever sort of eyes like lusting practically you can almost you can almost like taste the the greed in a sense coming off of him but it's not quite greed it's more like excitement and like you know he's kind of almost doing this thing with his hands where he's like boy i can't wait to get into this adventuring life you know yeah. oh one more thing i'll sort of uh sort of raise my finger over at path and uh, i yeah. assume it's path anyway uh yeah. and i say uh how much for this i sort of hold up the jeweled dagger necklace and sort of swing it in front of his face yeah he looks at that he's very you know taken taken back by it again and he starts inspecting it with his uh with his uh jeweler's eyeglass and as he's kind of flipping it about in his hands and turning it over um he he starts noticing the uh, the inscription that's on it and uh he's like oh fascinating fascinating and he's trying to figure out what it what it means and he uh he starts to he reaches actually under the under the desk here he pulls out a book of like translations or something and he puts it out on the counter and he's trying to figure out the runes basically he's looking at the first oh, rune and... i noticed this i sort of say uh i'll save you the trouble it means um for the king? Hmm. That first letter is not an F, he kind of says as he's looking at the translation. He's like, that's definitely a G. And he kind of writes down the G, and he's kind of moving on to the next rune. Yeah. If I'm going to be honest with you, we found that while we were doing our uh, job earlier. And if you're curious, it me it says uh, greed is good. 
ah, Creed is good. He kind of, as you say that, he stops writing and he starts kind of quickly looking at the rune translations just well enough to kind of see that the next one lines up with the R and the E and he kind of just takes your word for it at that point, doesn't bother going through. And he's like, fascinating, fascinating. And he picks it up and he, you know, he's holding it in one hand. He's still looking through his uh, jeweler's glass there at the uh, the d the dagger and the silver, and he's like, "Boy, this is a uh, this is quite a find." Did you find this with the with the gemstones? No, it's, uh, uh, it was in a temple. Yeah, old we, ruined temple. We were tasked with uh, heading to a old ruined temple to warn some excavators, and we found that dagger here. Uh, around, around the rubble. Interesting. It's this looks ancient. Do you have any idea how old this thing is? Mm. Could be a century years old. Could be a millennia. Who knows? Okay. Well, I would I would definitely like to uh, take this. I I know some places that would uh, again they 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 pay dearly for such a for such a find. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of work to sell something like this, though. Let me tell you that. Um, but I can tell it's genuine. The silver is high quality. The craftsmanship's excellent, and the inscription, huh? Greed is good. That's such an odd thing to write on a on a jewel dagger like this. I, I can't even. He's kind of pausing and scratching his temple. He's like, well, I wonder what such a thing would even mean. And then while he's saying this, he's still. Like doing that mental calculation, you know, trying to figure out what can I sell this thing for, how much trouble is it going to be for me, this kind of thing. It's like greed is good. What does that mean? For it means that being greedy gets you far. I mean, that's what I infer from it anyway. Huh. Well, you want to take it from uh, a sort of point over to Seps and say you want to take it from the bookmaster here. Uh, yes, the. The temple was once a temple dedicated to the Dwarven god of Greece, Abafar. Hmm. He 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 acknowledges you and doesn't necessarily look like he like it registers. But interesting. Uh, Gree didn't seem to take this god very far. Yeah. Truth be told, that was uh, probably the first time I ever saw. Any sort of temple or or a center dedicated to this deity. Something tells me it's not exactly a accepted god to follow. Yes, yes. Well, after after a bit of uh, looking about there, he finally comes back and says, "Well, I can give you fifty gold, uh, or." I can give you a 60 gold worth of store credit. Uh, you mentioned these other places that would take it from me. How much roughly would they give? Well, I mean, I wouldn't be a businessman if I gave away my contacts and, you know, my price list or anything. But, uh, you know, just no, no I mean, I mean, uh, as, a, as a gentleman, uh, I'm giving you my word and I'm giving you as much as I can afford to give you. Because uh, again, I have to go through some effort and some travel and some expense to to unload this and recover my cost and, and make it worth my while. So obviously, I can get more than fifty gold for it. And I'm not going to lie to you. If you go somewhere else, uh, if you want to travel all the way to Neverwinter, you might be able to find somebody up there, uh, or maybe not. You may end up turning around and coming right back. But uh, fifty ah, gold no, is fuck it. Yeah, that ain't worth the royal. Fifty gold. All right. Uh, so he kind of again says, or 60 in uh, store credit. That's all cock and eyebrow and say, 50 gold. At that, he kind of, he, he sets the dagger down on the, on the table here, takes the bag of gemstones to the back again. You hear some more fussing about and whatnot. A couple minutes later or so, he comes back out with the, uh, another smaller bag. And he kind of pours it out onto the counter, and uh, gives you gives you guys time to count it yourself. And while you're 
presumably doing that, he picks up the chain that you guys are selling and he has a, a bit of like jewelers, cleaner stuff. And he's kind of very carefully and meticulously, you know, wiping it down, getting any dust and all this kind of stuff on it, polishing the jewel to make it shine and this kind of thing. And eventually he puts it back in the bag. And um, as puts... I'm counting out the gold, I'm going to slide 10 over to set. Yeah. Uh, and no. take the uh, take the other forty. Yeah, he he doesn't. Barton doesn't pay attention to any of this. He just kind of takes the bag with the uh, the chain in it and puts it down under the counter. And he keeps standing there and says, "Well, is there anything else I can do for you guys? Uh, you know, if, if if on your adventures you need anything, I've got it all. Got rope, rations, torches." Uh, pikes, uh, any any type of adventuring gear you need, I've got it. Skins. You don't happen to have a pearl, do you? A pearl? Uh, Perhaps yeah. one worth around a hundred gold. Let me uh, let me get back to you on that. I don't have that here readily. Uh, if you wanna, if you definitely want it, if you want to give me a down payment. Might be able to acquire it for you, no promises. Uh, if for any reason I can't get it for you, I'll give you your money back. But uh, at the moment, I don't have anything like that on hand. Hmm. Well, I'm sure I'll be able to find the pearl somewhere else. Okay. Uh, what do you need a pearl for, just out of curiosity? I'll keep my eye out for you in the meantime. Oh, well, you see... As a uh, worshiper, you know what? Just I have a certain ability that allows me to discover the magical property of of artifacts and other magical items. Ah, a magical trinket. Say no more. I understand. So you need a you need a high quality pearl with a good polish and all these types of things. Oh uh, yes, it will. Allow me to stare into it like a mystic might stare into a crystal ball. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, if you don't find one, and if I find one before you, I'll uh, try to get word out to you if you're around town. But uh, in the meantime, I've, I've got everything else. If you guys need torches, rations, and he goes into this whole sales pitch again. Uh, have you got arrows? Well... Weapons and armory are not really what I do here. I'm more into the, just the the gear, but uh, I, I wish I I wish I could keep your business. But uh, down the road a ways, we have a woman named Lenine who runs the. Uh, one second, the Lion Shield Coster, and yeah, she carries all kinds of weapons and armory and. Uh, ammunition for, for quivers and these kinds of things. So uh, go down there, and if, if you do, be sure to tell her that uh, I sent you. I sort of give a short nod, and um, I sort of look over back over at um, all these shells, um, seeing if there's anything else uh, that I'd sort of want. Yeah, he kind of tries to follow your gaze and see what you're looking for so he can, you know, start in again on you if you, if you catch something that he thinks is particularly worth selling. But uh, nothing he sees really catches his eyes. He just kind of watches you guys and keeps his eye on the halfling, like an extra eye on the halfling, like he doesn't trust him. Uh, will that be all, gentlemen? Is there anything else I can help you with? You don't, by, by curiosity, you don't have to carry potions, do you? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have potions here. Uh, there is a lady that sells potions. Uh, I'm assuming, let me ask you this first, what kind of potions are you looking for? Well, just ones to help with any wounds, and I don't have the uh, magical means to sell them up. Yeah, I'm aware of a woman that sells 
healing potions. Uh, it's it's not close. It's not in town. It's a it's a ways out. If you want to go through the trouble of going all the way to see her, her name's uh, Adabra Gwyn. She's uh, down in the Umbridge Hill area. Uh, Adabra. Yeah, it's a uh, fussy like old Abra lady. Kadabra? Like like all uh he he writes it he starts writing it down let me let me just write it down for you that'll be easier than me trying to that's uh that's a little bit on the, on the note right? no a name's a name he doesn't get your reference at all he's just like so yeah adabra <laughs> you can catch her sometimes at the Umbridge Hill area, it's it's again, it's a it's a journey, it's a hike down there. So, but uh, she's the only one I know of that sells any sort of magical potions or anything like that. Unfortunately, we don't ever get it up here. People that go see her, you know, they keep it to themselves, and I I can't. Uh, so far, I haven't found anybody that'll take the trip down there for me and and buy them and bring them back up here, but. Uh, yeah, that's 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 who I would that's who I can suggest. All right, set will just nod and say, "Well, if we're ever in that area, we'll pay her a visit." Well, if you do, be sure that. to tell her I sent you. Oh, I will. I give a small nod. Yeah, and I begin to leave. All right. So yeah, you're. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna say Donna Bella and. Quinn follow you guys out to the streets. Yeah, so you guys were in like... there a little while, not a super long time, but it took the it took Barth in a while to go through the gems and verify their authenticity and um, at this point the sun's getting a little bit low on the horizon, starting to get some really long shadows at this point, but uh, you know, it's still daytime. Yeah, I'll just like quietly say the Zadro. Yeah, I probably won't mes- mention him. I sort of uh, chuckle at that. And say, well, you do you. Probably, probably forget. Win. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll probably forget uh, forget who he is by the time we're down there. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so you think enough time has passed for the, uh, the town master to finally give up his secrets? Hmm. Yeah, we can go pay him a visit and see if he's uh, ready to tell us what's going on. Okay. So you head over to the town master. Mm hmm. All right. So, yeah, as you, as you get there, you know, you're kind of probably expecting his peculiarities at this point, and, and you're not disappointed. He uh, comes to the door with much trepidation and starts uh his whole schlick there about uh yeah what do you want uh we hear about job you said you had one uh, a couple hours ago uh yeah who are you the the guys you sent to the temple the dragons no not the, the guys are not... to be dragons you're not suffering from any memory issues, are you? I remember somebody earlier babbling on in dragon satanic speak earlier, and that sound your voices sound like them. How do I know you're not dragons? I say draconic. Oh, really, that all? <laughs> if you open the door, you'll find out we're not dragons. I am sure you I am not opening this door. Certainly not for a dragon. I'm, I, I'm just uh, saying... If we are dragons, you're about to die any second now. What would you want with me? I'm skinny. I'm a tiny little man. I will not provide even a morsel for you. Hey, sometimes we need to go for snacks. Aha, but seriously, so you are a dragon. Just, just, just open the door. We're not dragons. Exactly what a I dragon would know, say. I just know the language. I'm a historian, goddammit. <sighs> well... I will take it at the moment that you're not dragons, because I do have need for adventurers. Are you the adventurers? Yes. I think so. Quinn speaks up. Yeah. Yeah, I was just here. I was just here. I was asking you about 
about the adventurers. So do you have them? Do you have them? Do you have the adventurers? You should see the kind of money these guys are making on the adventures. I want an adventure. Give me an adventure. And at that, the town master's like, oh, slow down, slow down. She says, all right, I got a couple things going on. It's like, there are these gnomes down, down south of, uh, down south of Phandalin, and they need to be, uh, they need to be warned as well, similar to, similar to the warnings that you gave the dwarves. So if you can go down Not there, a job. Uh, it's potentially more involved than that, but essentially, uh, I just need you to go down there and warn these guys. Also, if you have the ability, there's a, there's a peculiar lady who, uh, is more or less in the way. Uh, you could swing by, see her either on the way or on the way back. doesn't matter to me. And, uh, yeah, just warn her. Another courier job, just like you, like you said. And, uh, just tell her that the dragon's in the area and, uh, you know, don't want to see anything happen to her. And um, That woman does not happen to be a Dabra, is she? Oh, uh, yeah. Have you already been by there? Oh, no. Uh, we just no, had a the, the local general store owner told us about them. Huh. I wonder what he knows about her. Well, she apparently sells potions, from what I understand. Yeah, well, wouldn't surprise me. She could be a witch. That's not like prodding Sept. Wouldn't <laughs> dragons know and be in be in league with witches? Are you guys dragons? Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, I believe it will be devils that will be in league with witches. Well, you're all up to no good as far as I'm concerned, but if you are the ones yeah. that uh, went and saw the dwarves, then I man, and I suppose you can be trusted with this quest as well. And, uh, so, so do you want the job or not? Of course. Uh, we will happily take the job. All right, so with that, he's like, well, which one? You want both? They're kind of in the same area. You could potentially do both. Us as well. It's more efficient that way, isn't it? Uh, yeah. As long as you don't get killed in the process. Don't worry so, about that. So with that, he kind of <clears throat> he slides cards under the door again, one at a time. He slides. Uh, I'll put this in Discord for you guys. He slides this card under the door, and then he slides this card under the door. And, uh, Xandro, why don't you just go ahead and read over those? I like out loud so we can have it for the video playback. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the local midwife, an acolyte of, uh, is it Chat or Shan, Shou, Shantia? Good question. It works for me. Shanta. <laughs> Shan Shanta. An acolyte of Shanta named Adabra Gwyn. Uh, lives by herself in a stone windmill on the side of the hill a few miles south of Phandalin. With dragon sightings becoming common, it is not safe for her to go alone. Urge Adabra to return to Phandalin. Once she's safe, visit the townmaster visit townmaster Harbin Wester to claim a reward of fi uh, 25 gold pieces. Uh, and our second job, a clan of uh, reclusive Rock Gnomes uh, resides in a small network of caves in the mountains to the southeast. Uh, the Gnomes of Nomengard, that is an amazing name by the way, uh, are known for their magical invention. They might have something which, uh, which they wish to defeat the dragon. Get whatever you can from them. If you bring back something useful and don't want to keep for yourselves, Tarmaster Harbin, Harbin Wester will pay you 25, uh, 50 gold pieces for it. As you're reading these, he's like, 50 gold? I don't recall paying that much for the Nomen Guards. Well, that's what it says on there. He literally just passed us the note. That, that can't be right. Give me that note back. Nah. <laughs> <sighs> Dragons. Okay. You know, I I can offer you some uh, spiritual assistance if you need. I can protect, perhaps cure you of that uh, apparent short-term memory loss you're suffering from. 
go on? Ah, uh, yes, it's quite simple. Just let me have a good look at you, and I will tell you if it could be cured. Be gone, devil. And he just, you hear this, like, stuff being shoved up against the door, and he starts walking away. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure it's short-term memory loss. I think he's just an idiot. Yeah. To be honest, I would tell him, say something in Infernal if I knew that language. I do know Abyssal, though. I, mm -hmm. And I just yell at him in Abyssal. You, you better be careful who you piss off. Dragons! I knew it! Dragons! <laughs> I'll show you dragons in a minute. I'm gonna walk off. All right. Yeah. yeah. That is foul. Right. If we ever need to sacrifice someone to a dragon, can we all agree that it's that head? That fuckhead? Well, to be honest, if this dragon meets his tar talent any harm, it probably will attack any day now. Well, we'll either be gone when it's not when it's here, or get in. I suppose. While you guys are talking, know. Donabella kind of says, "Guys, do you know where I can sell this javelin?" Hmm. I've been maybe carrying that, it uh, all the that... way back from the temple, and I have no use for it. Didn't that maybe that clover said the uh, line shield coaster, something like that? Yeah, She's interesting weapons. There. Yeah, whatever. I either want to sell it or just throw it in, into the town master's chest. One or the other, I don't care. Now, he's still giving us gold. True. Wait, for, <laughs> wait for a better deal, and then throw it into his chest. I like how you think. All right, so I'm going to go to the lion shield coster and get rid of this thing. Meet you guys back at the inn, or do you want to come with me? I might as well see what they have on offer. Mm, yeah, must as well. All right, so this is uh, more or less the entrance. And uh, as you guys walk in, you can see there's, you know, this room of sorts. And I met, and you can kind of see your way through. You make your way perhaps back here or something. This isn't the greatest picture for the Lion Shield Coster. But anyway, uh, once you walk in, you are greeted by a friendly-ish of sort of sounding voice. Uh, what can I do for you? I sort of look over to uh, Donabella. Uh, yeah, I have this javelin. I need to, uh, I need to sell it. The gentleman down the street, I can't remember his name. He, funny enough, because he told me to remember, and I already forgot. And as soon as she says that, uh, Lenine just said, yeah, yeah, that was Barthen. He tells everybody that. Anyway, I need to sell this javelin. Can, can you sell it? Or can I, can I sell it? Anyway, they exchange back and forth there, and uh, she gets her gold for the javelin. Uh, nope. I think it's Sorry five. That. I think it's five. I do have a... I need to, like, put little bookmark things in this book, but whatever it is, I'll, I'll get that to you at some point. And then after she finishes her transaction... With Donabella, because I don't really want to have a conversation with myself. Um, <laughs> she says, uh, "You know, looking looking at you guys. Uh, what can I do for you guys?" Uh well, have you got anything in the uh, swords department? Yeah, I sorry about have... that. Oh, did you disconnect? Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no worries. I didn't notice. Um... Yeah, uh, no, it's five silver, so yeah, she sells, she gives her five silver pieces for it. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I've got uh, basically everything, everything, everything an adventurer could want. So I have crossbows, clubs, hand axes. I've got great swords, and she's kind of pointing oh, shit, to, to her store as she's doing this. 
uh, I sort of look at her and say, ah, crossbows, yes. We go in the crossbow department. Well, and she kind of, I imagine, pulls one down, like, off the wall and hands it to you for your... for your uh, consideration. And she says, this is a, this is a lighter crossbow. And these go for uh, 25 gold. And she kind of ratches his, ratchets back the mechanism as you're holding on to the other end of it, just to kind of demonstrate its use. It's like, I've got this one. And uh, she kind of points to another one. She's like, I've also got this uh, short bow over here. Um, you know, this one, the short bow is a bit lighter, but, uh, the crossbow here, the one that you're already holding, she says this one has a little bit more of a punch. Yes, this is exactly the one I'm looking for. Do you have it in a more fancy style? Maybe some uh, jewels on the end. Maybe some gold encrusted plates, huh? Uh, no. She kind of looks at you like... Mm, sorry, fancy pants, no. Guess this will have to do then. Uh, and at that, I sort of pull out my bow um, and my quiver of 16 arrows. Um, I lay those down on the table and say, how much am I going to get for these? What is yours, a short bow? It is a short bow. Okay, and uh, so... All right, out of character for a second, your... Your arrows, are they the same kind that go in the other weapon, or are they different? Um, no, arrows are different to crossbow bolts. All right, one second. So it should have two sections. Yeah, I'm just trying to find, like, a, like I have weapons, but I'm trying to see where I have... Like, it's normally under adventuring gear. Okay, so... Ah, ammunition, here we go. Okay, yeah, arrows and crossbow bolts. All right, yeah, so I she takes a look at your short bow, and she's like, okay, uh, I can see this is in very good condition. Looks like it's been well utilized, and um, as far as the the, the crossbow goes, uh, I'm, you know, I'm willing to, and she kind of looking at the short bow again. She's like, I'm willing to give you a, a gold piece for the short bow. Okay, and the arrows? Uh, you know, arrows... How many? Let me... She starts counting them. How many are there? 16. 16, I'm guessing. Okay, so... so I, I'll, I'll give you... A, I can give you... A, I can give you a silver piece for these. Sure. She kind of laughs. Want <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, excellent. Excellent. So she hands you the, uh, the one gold piece for the short bow. And the one silver piece for the arrows. Uh, and then I'll take the crossbow and 20 bolts. Okay, yeah. Crossbow, uh, uh, that'll be uh, 25 gold, and or just 24 if you give me that one back. Uh, yep, yeah. I give her 24 gold. Okay. Yeah, the crossbow bolts here, uh, yeah, these... Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a set in, and she just gives you a 20. How generous. Yes, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, uh, generous that way. <laughs> uh, and crossbow bolts. I can always come back for any more. Yes, uh, by all means, anytime, you're... Your business is wanted and welcomed here. I smile and say, if you've got anything more uh, spectacular, let me know. Okay, yeah, uh, well, uh, I mean, I've got armor, if you need armor. What do you got? Well, she kind of starts sizing you up a little bit, and she's like, you kind of look like, uh, you kind of look like somebody that could use a good set of plate mail. It's like, I've got a Nice set, couple nice sets, and uh, this one here looks like it fits you. If not, I can always make any custom adjustments you need. Of course, that'll cost you extra. Uh, 1,500 gold for this set right here. 
Uh, is plate mail medium? Plate mail is medium, isn't it? It's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy? Fucking hell. <laughs> I look up and down and sort of uh, wave my hand. Nah, too clunky. Gets in the way of, uh, well, me. Huh. Well, uh, I also have half plate. If you're looking for something a bit more uh, light and agile, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not going to give you as much coverage as the full plate mail would, but uh, this is uh, 750 gold, and it'll offer you... Um, what, what, what armor are you wearing at the moment? I mean, I wouldn't I'm wearing by, by looking leather at armor. Leather armor. She's like, yeah, this would offer you a lot more protection than uh, that leather armor you're, you're wearing. And that shit is medium, yeah? Yeah, medium, half plate. I sort of look her up and down and say, listen, I'm not made of money. Yeah, fooled me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I understand. I understand. Well, uh, it looks like that's just plain leather armor you're wearing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Do you have any uh, dudded? I do, I do, and that's actually what I was just thinking. Uh, hmm, just kind of, hmm, taking your measurements sort of visually. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I got several sets actually, and I, I'm sure at least one of these would fit you. Uh, she kind of goes over to another wall on the other side of the place and grabs like two sets, one in each hand, and brings them over and kind of holds them up against you and says, uh, yeah, one of these should work. Uh, take your pick. You know, uh, I picked the fancier one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, fancy pants. Uh, okay, yeah, this uh, forty-five gold. If uh, if you're interested in this one, and uh, if you don't have any more need for that leather that you're wearing there, uh, it's a bit used, but it looks like it's in pretty good condition. I'll I'll give you eight gold for it. So if you're interested, the difference would be 37 plus, plus the, uh, the leather that you're already wearing. I, I nod and say, yeah, I'll do. All right. And she kind of points you over to this other room or something, you know, yeah, you can, you can go in there and, uh, disrobe and come back out and I'll have this one, uh, or she kind of hands you the other one you can change out. I quickly take it and uh, rush into the room to get changed. How about you, sir? Anything I can do for you? Should I be looking at you, Sept? Oh, oh no. I'm that's the same in the money for something else. Um, I will say, though, where I'm from, we often have to, like, sign some, like, letter and get approval from the, uh, you know, the local hierarchy before we're allowed to, uh, you know, use or wear any sort of military equipment. Huh. Well, uh, I don't know anything about that. I, I, I'm not going to make you sign anything just to, to buy gear. Yeah, I, I don't have a clue on me anyways. Hmm. You have very kind eyes. You have a kind soul. I just feel like I've. I feel like I have some cosmic connection with you. I, never mind. Never mind. I'm babbling. <laughs> yeah, I say draconic. Yeah, that is strange. Oh, sorry. I was blabbing in a different language again. Hmm. Interesting. And she kind of wanders off. Oh. Um. Yeah. I assume at that point I'll come out in my. Fancy studded leather armor. Well, fancier <laughs> studded leather armor. All right. Yeah. So she kind of sizes you up. Ah, that that looks excellent. That looks very good. So, uh, just a matter of payment. So I lay the uh, leather down on the table and say, "Remind me how much." The old leather that is. She kind con she contemplates for a second, increasing her original price, but just decides against it. Decides that you guys are potential future customers uh, that 37 gold is is what we agreed on i nod and i uh flick 37 gold down onto the table and she kind of just takes it there and puts it away in her secure location that she has there and looks at uh, donabella 
and uh, Quinn, and you guys can make these decisions. Uh, is there anything I can uh, get for you guys? I don't actually have their character cards here in front of me. Um, um, and by the way, Sept, obviously I'm assuming you're going to take care of um, Quinn in terms of combat and decisions and oh, things like that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, what armors are they proficient in? Uh, let me take a look. He is a warrior, so he is... One moment. Um, let's see. He has he has a chain shirt and a shield already. And yeah, the sidekick thing is completely brand new. Yeah, I'm just assuming that since he's a warrior, he'll be proficient with uh. All mar all weapons and all armor. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he could uh, wear heavy armor. If uh, and, and also keep in mind that even though he was introduced after the Dwarven Exchange, we're going to assume that he's equal level with you guys. Yeah, I'm going to take to modify it. So bring his right. uh, level up to second level before oh, shit, hold on. like a combat situation rolls around. Let's see here where Marsh is striking That is a nice upgrade. Yeah, your armor should give you an extra plus one, I think, on your armor class. Plus one, yeah. I think I calculated it wrong before, actually. Because where I'm reading it here, it says you add your... Um, dex modifier. Dex mod to the armor. So yeah. leather was 11 plus my dex mod, which is four. Mm -hmm, so that should be 15. So that should have been 15. Um... It was at 14 before, so I did some... Oh, yeah. There. So it should so go now, from six to 14 to 16. It, it's now at 16. I'm super happy. Yeah. Make it quite a bit harder to hit. And now I have proficiency in my ranged weapon. <laughs> Which is always a plus. Mm. Ah, should be box. Yeah, I don't uh, have precisely about the sidekick here, but since it's a warrior, and, I'll, and I, we can look into this afterwards, but um, if you want to get him different armor. So he's currently got a, oh. ch a chain shirt, so he could most definitely have anything in the medium armor, probably even into the heavy. Yeah, because I'm like 99% sure he can wear heavy armor. Yeah, I believe so and I just this little stat block thing they give you is very scant I've, I've looked at it like three times now it literally doesn't say I, I think there might be more information on it somewhere else but I can't I'm not going to sit here and constantly flip back and forth looking for such things so but uh, but yeah at that uh, Lenin is just you know so anything else I look towards uh, our halfling friend, and I'm like, "There's nothing in particular, particular you'll like here, right?" Uh, well, I uh, I can't really afford anything right now, unfortunately. Even if I did see something that caught my eye, I'm not uh, I'm not the rich adventurer like you guys yet. Well, I'm just saying, if we're going to be, you know, trusting on each other in the, the upcoming, you know, weeks, months, perhaps even years of our life, it will be a good idea to make sure that you're as well equipped as possible. Ah, uh, yeah, very true, very true. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I think I'm good for now, uh. That scale mail there is uh, catching my eye, but uh, I don't know if I want to rattle around all loud and clunky, so... And that breastplate's definitely out of my price range, so... And I, and I certainly couldn't ask for that much in advance from you guys, so uh, I, 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 I think I'm good for now. Very, very well. So, I, uh, I suppose we're done here? 
unless there's uh, anything else I can get for you guys, uh, be happy to. I'm sort of looking over my uh, my hand crossbow and say, I know for, for one, I'm happy. I'm good to go. And uh, at that, she just kind of looks over at you, Sept, and says, you know, uh, maybe, maybe I'll see you around. Uh, I feel like we've met in a past life or something. I, I don't know. I can't quite put my... Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, babbling this, again. I'm, this I'm is sorry. quite strange. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm babbling again. I'm, and then she just kind of goes back to what she's doing, but you can tell that her face is turning a bit red. I sort of look up uh, and sort of like dot my eyes between you two. And I suddenly have me. the urge... I suddenly have the urge to play a harmonica for some reason. She just looks at you and just like practically visibly melts in front of you and then immediately turns around and starts going about her pretending to be going about business, but clearly yeah. she's just shuffling papers back and forth with no intent. Uh, clear, clearly it's just a superstitious nonsense. All right, let's, let's head, head out. As you head out, it's like, hey, you two are made for each other. Now just walk ahead. All right, so you guys heading Jeez. to the Stonehill Inn, or? Um, you said it was starting to get pretty late, right? Yeah, I would say you know you guys got back from the Dwarven uh, quest, and you'd gone to the Stonehill Inn. You had been to the Town Master. You've been to Barthens. Uh, you've been to the Lion Shield Coster, and each place you've gone, you know, you've spent some time there. So I would say it's dusk at this point. The sun's definitely. Uh, fully below the horizon, there's still light in the sky. Uh, I would, I would even say, Xandro, for you, it's probably like, like a relief almost that that bright burning ball of fire is finally out of your sight, and it's still just insanely bright to you. But at least it's not hurting you anymore. Oh shit! I forgot to ask her for a hand. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm sort of a lot uh, more chirpy as I'm walking over to the Stonehill Inn. Like visibly, like seeing in your <laughs> more or less, <laughs> sort of like chest out and showing it off to everyone. All right, so yeah, you guys walk over to the Stonehill Inn and uh, you come inside, and uh, I, I, yeah, I guess all four of you are together, Donna, Bella, and Quinn. They're just kind of following you guys wherever it is you're going, and uh, as you come in, uh. Toblin, I think was his name, says, uh, ha, so you're back. Did you get everything yes, you were we looking are. for? Uh, yes, we will like those rooms now. Okay, yep, yeah, uh, yep, no problem. All four of you, or are any of you going to be sharing a room? All four of us. All yeah, right, I'm having a room to my own. Yeah, no thank you on the room sharing part. Yeah, no problem, understand. I like my privacy as well. So, uh, yep, it's going to be uh, five silver each for the room for the night. Yeah, I'll just give him a gold and say, for me and the little one. Ah, excellent. Very, very generous. Uh, and with that, he, take, he takes your gold and starts filling up a mug and just slides it over to you on the house even though you've already paid like twice as much as was required but no i mean i'm paying for two rooms uh, 10 silver will equal a bell of gold right oh yeah yeah right i was for some reason i was thinking it was slightly more but but thanks for the ill yeah i'm gonna flip in gold as well i'm paying for donabella's room uh thank you thank you and he just kind of pours all you guys a mug and just slides it over on the house. A nod. And uh, just basically like down the ale and what. Yeah. Sip just wants to get to bed at this point, so he's just going to down his ale then head to his room. Yeah, I can imagine Quinn is in the same position. He's uh, just found his way into Phandalin and is looking forward just kind of get into his room and chill out for the night and Donna Bella probably the same she's had enough walking and adventuring for one day fighting off orcs and uh, and whatnot. 
So, all right. So yeah, you guys go into your room, and uh, the evening and the morning were the next day. Kind of a biblical thing there. <laughs> uh huh. And with that, I am going to uh, pause for a moment here. <laughs>